All right, uh, welcome back to the Green Ninja Climate Science Series. Uh, in this video, we're going to be talking about uh, is the Earth getting warmer? So it's kind of implied by the term global warming that the Earth is getting warmer. But uh, let's look at you know what the actual evidence is uh, for the Earth uh, receiving an increase in temperature. So uh, kind of the first most obvious place to look um, when you're trying to figure out if the Earth is getting warmer or not, is you can look at these meteorological stations that are on the surface of the Earth. And so these have uh, increased in coverage uh, over time, but scientists use um, various statistical techniques to uh, stitch together records of, of the temperature from meteorological stations over periods of time and account for uh, different uh, spatial coverages and come up with uh, kind of a single record. And so that is what uh, this record is here, showing uh, each year is a square here. And this is the global um, surface temperature of the Earth uh, re as recorded by these meteorological stations. So we see that uh, since about 1880 um, up, up to 2012, um, you know, there's, there's wiggles in temperature, but overall there's been a large increase in temperature as uh, measured from these meteorological uh, stations. So an increase of about 1.2 degrees Celsius or uh, uh, two, around 2 degrees Fahrenheit, which um, is a pretty substantial increase in temperature relative to uh, the geological um, record, which we'll talk about in a, in a later video. But okay, so we can, we can look at increases in temperature from meteorological stations. What else can we look at? Well, we can look at uh, weather balloons. So since the 1950s, we've had weather balloons go up on pretty much a daily basis. And when you compare the, the temperature measurements, um, kind of globally averaged from weather balloons, that's the red line here, to uh, the temperature measurements from meteorological stations, that's the black line, um, we have very good agreement um, from the 50s through the 2000s. So weather balloons are also showing uh, an increase in temperature. Um, another measurement of temperature comes from satellites. So since the 19, late 1970s, we've had satellites measuring temperature, and they essentially show that the increase in, war in temperature has been roughly the same as what their weather balloons and what the meteorological stations show. So this gives us pretty good um, confidence that uh, indeed the temperature has been warming pretty significantly um, at least you know over the past few decades when we've had satellites but then going back further using uh, meteorological stations as well. Uh, so instead of modern technology to actually record um, the temperature directly we can also look at uh, indirect measurements of temperature. And one obvious place to start to uh, look for indirect measurements of temperature is to look uh, at how Earth's frozen water has changed over time, or the Earth's cryosphere. So there's frozen water in mountains called glaciers, there's frozen ground, there's snow, there's sea ice or ice just sitting on top of the ocean, there's ice sheets, giant <clears throat> masses of ice that sit on top of land. Um, so we can look at how all these things are changing and see if we can infer any type of temperature change from them. So um, the first example here would be to look at uh, glaciers. So there are some dramatic uh, photographs showing large decreases in glacier extent. So in this case, we have a glacier in Glacier Bay National Park um, from 1941 to 2004, showing a pretty uh, dramatic decrease uh, in the size of that glacier. And here's another example. Um, of a glacier in the South Cascades um, from 1928 to 2000, so another decrease um, that's pretty pretty visible. Uh, and so when we look at glaciers worldwide, we see a similar story. So this is uh, the glacier, the length of these glaciers relative to their length in 1950 um, in different regions of the world, and we see a very similar story around the world that um, you know since the mid 1800s. We've seen a large decrease in the length of these glaciers, which can be um, inferred to be coming from an increase uh, in temperature. Uh, other uh, pieces of evidence you can look at sea ice. So this is uh, Arctic sea ice in uh, September 1st, 1979. This is near the time of year when the sea ice is at a minimum uh, in the Arctic uh, versus September 1st, 2012. 
and we see that um, this is uh, from the first year of the satellite record to the most recent year of the satellite record. And we can see that during this time period when satellites have been viewing the extent of sea ice, we've seen a very dramatic uh, decrease in the amount of sea ice in the Arctic. And um, the Antarctic sea ice has actually been increasing um, slightly due to some mechanisms that we uh, don't have time to go into here. But if you average them together, if you take the Arctic and the Antarctic sea ice and you come up with a global data set of sea ice, we see that globally sea ice uh, is decreasing uh, over the time period that we've been able to measure it from satellites. Uh, so sea ice is decreasing. We can look at um, the mass of ice sheets. So Greenland and Antarctica are our two major ice sheets on Earth today. Um, since around 2002, we've had uh, the GRACE satellite in orbit, which actually measures the gravitational pull of both of these ice sheets and is able to come up with a measure of how much ice uh, is, con is contained in these ice sheets. Um, from that gravitational pull. So we see that since 2002, when this satellite has been up, the Antarctic ice sheet has lost around, say, 1,200 gigatons of ice. Uh, to give you an idea of how big a gigaton is, uh, one gigaton ice cube would look like this compared to the Empire State Building here. So a gigaton of ice is a lot of ice, and uh, Antarctica is down about uh, 1,200 gigatons just since uh, 2002. And the other bad news is it looks like the rate of, of change is, is not linear, but rather accelerating. Um, so we can also use this same satellite to look at uh, Greenland ice mass. And again, since 2002, we have a decrease of around 2,000 gigatons, so even more than Antarctica. And uh, again, it looks like this rate of decrease is, is accelerating. Um, so that's uh, bad news because that water eventually flows into the ocean and we get sea level rise from that. Uh, so uh, other um, pieces of evidence, we can look at the snow coverage um, in the northern hemisphere where there's a bunch of land for snow to fall on. And since the <clears throat> 1960s in this data set, we've seen a decrease in the, uh, in the aerial extent of snow coverage we can look at uh, seasonally frozen ground. So uh, again, this is extent uh, in terms of area. And so we're down, uh, looks like 3 million square kilometers um, in terms of frozen ground since the early 1900s. Uh, so, you know, all these things are kind of pointing in the same direction. We can, we can look at the uh, amount of time that different uh, lakes and rivers are frozen over the course of the year. So, here we have the date of freezing of different uh, lakes and rivers, uh, which were recorded um, back into the 1800s, and then also the date of thawing. And what you see is that, in general, the freezing date is, going, is becoming later and later in the year, and the thawing date of these lakes and rivers is becoming uh, is com coming earlier and er earlier and earlier every year. And so what that means is that the amount of time uh, spent frozen uh, is decreasing for all of these different uh, bodies of water. Um, we can look at the amount of total heat content in the ocean. Um, this is from the 1960s, uh, from a depth of zero down to 2,000 meters, um, the total amount of heat, and we see that there, there's been a large increase in the total amount of heat uh, in the ocean over that time period. Uh, that's measured from uh, buoys, and now more recently we have uh, floats that go around and, and measure the temperature and can calculate heat content from that. Um, we have satellites measuring uh, sea level um, with, you know, lasers that bounce off the surface and you can uh, come up with uh, how, how far away the surface of the water is from the satellite and get a measure of sea level from that. Uh, so here's, here's a graph of sea level going back to um, the 1870s or earlier, possibly, and uh, so back back then, it was it was really tide gauges that were used to come up with uh, these sea level estimates, and then more recently, it's it's the satellite data. But we see overall um, a pretty steady increase in sea level over that time period, which <clears throat> again is is due to the fact that uh, ice sheets are melting and pouring water into the ocean. 
but it's also due to the due, due to the effect that when uh, water warms up, it actually expands. So we expect we expect sea level to rise both because of melting uh, ice from land as well as from just the thermal expansion uh, of the ocean itself. So we have tons of different pieces of evidence kind of all pointing in the same direction that indeed, yes, the Earth is uh, getting warmer. And uh, there's really not um, <laughs> very much controversy about that at all. I mean, you th there's just almost no way for all these things to be giving you the exact same answer uh, without the Earth actually experiencing um, a very large increase in its uh, temperature and heat content. So the Earth is definitely getting warmer.